Hey Derek, how's it going? Good Matt, how are you? I'm doing well. Guess what time it is? It's Boost Briefs time. Hey. And it's also another head-to-head -head challenge. <laughs> I'm here for it. Like, it both literally and figuratively. I'm, I'm here, but I'm also here for it. And I'm, I'm just for it. Yeah, that's what, that's what we do, so, right? Matt, we've each brought one bottle to this head-to-head. -head. What did you bring today? I brought Sazerac, also known as Baby Sass. I brought Rittenhouse, also known as Rittenhouse. Oh, Screw Top! What up? I there, haven't had it. There's nothing wrong with the Screw Top bottle. No, no, there, no, there isn't because a lot of times the corks end up leaking. Yep. Found that out with a bottle of rum on my cabinet that I took down and set inside the wine rack and was wondering why the dog was always standing in front of it <laughs> licking the floor. Now I know. <laughs> he likes coconut rum. Oh, oh. <laughs> Not yeah, spring break. Not good. <laughs> he needs to step his drinking game up. Yeah. So I haven't had the written house. And I have not had the baby says. Let's change that. All right. Okay. I'll pour it. Hey, what? Uh, I, didn't make it. Sure. I, I don't know what I was going to say. How about a scavenger? Hey. Somebody, yep. I'm going to pour the Sazerac into my Raleigh Bourbon and Banter glass. Also known as a decanter. What? How is that glass a decanter? Shut up! Is that the wrong word? So All right. I need to make sure that I keep these straight. So I'll put the written house on the right, the Sazerac on the left. Okay. Who are we going first? Um, let's do the written house first. Do the written house first. I have some notes on this guy. So this one, twenty-five dollars. You can find it most anywhere. Yeah, it's just not always available. It's less hard to get than Buffalo Trace, but it's that kind of thing where it's a an inexpensive bottle of whiskey that you it's usually punches above its weight class. So it's got a cult following behind yeah. it. I'm not a huge rye fan, but when Matt introduced me to some better ryes, I was like, well, let me try the Rage then. And I'd heard this always came recommended. It's bottled in Bond, which we've talked about before. How it it has certain criteria that it has to be. It has to be 50%, has to be at least four years old, one distillery, all that kind of stuff. So you're getting a certain guarantee of standards, not necessarily quality with it. Again, for about 25 bucks. So what they say here, let me go to, it's a Heaven Hill product. Yeah, 100 proof, four years old. Doesn't say the mash bill on here. Says they're straight oh, rye so whiskey. secretive about that. Has a storied past with a heritage that commemorates Philadelphia's famous Rittenhouse Square. It's a mahogany color. Have they seen mahogany? It's a weak ass mahogany. <laughs> Aroma of dried fruits, toffee, and sweet peppers. Taste clean, rich cocoa, citrus, cinnamon, nutmeg, and vanilla. Finish lingering maple like spiciness. Have you ever heard sweet peppers in a description? You ever heard of maple spice? No. What about sweet maple and spicy? Sweet maple peppers. Oh, sweet maple peppers. It's like a habanero was stuffed with honey butter. Should we candy some peppers? We could, or we could just drink this. Oh, okay. That's not bad. No. For twenty-five dollars, that's not bad at all. I don't know about you. I don't get much on the nose. No, there's very little nose on that at all. Dried fruits, toffee, and sweet peppers. <laughs> sweet peppers. Uh. I mean, I yeah. dried fruits maybe. When you pop the top off of a, or you're cutting up a green bell pepper, you don't get the spicy pepper nose, mm -hmm. but you still get like that. Not. Mm -hmm. Like that pepper. I don't know. Maybe it's just I because know. I hate green bell peppers. So. Well, what about red ones or yellow ones? Those are delicious. See. And I know they're all the same pepper. I know that. I'm exactly the same way. But they're Orange, different. Orange, red, they're... yellow, crush them. Green, all delicious. Don't like them. The only way I want green peppers, and it's I'll accept them, is if you're doing like onions and peppers, Philly cheesesteak, or a brat, something on a hoagie. Yes. Either way, I'd still rather have red, yellow, orange, because those are the ones that don't suck. <laughs> That's true. The not sucking part is big. i uh, going to walk away from that, Matt. Yeah, no, I think that's really just a, that'd be an everyday, Yeah, you could make a drink out of it. Like, I wouldn't feel bad mixing that. At 25 no. bucks, that's a good nope. cocktail liquor. And for as little as we said we got on the nose, 
there's actually a decent amount going on on the palette with that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Um, going to the Sazerac. So it's a Buffalo Trace. You know, they produce basically everything in the world now. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually mm -hmm. the one and only New, Orle New Orleans original. Uh, it's back, dates back to the 1800s. So we've got two products made in Kentucky that honor New Orleans and Philadelphia. That's right. There's yeah. a drink named after it, the Sazerac, which you use Peshaw's bitters and absinthe, or there's two other choices of liquor that you go in. Um, is it Aperol? I don't know. No, is, is, that, is, that, is that... Oh, is that a liquor? Yes. Yes. Yes, so that's one that you can use that or absinthe or one other, and that's how you make okay. the drink. Um, and that's what that's what this is known for is being yeah. from that drink. It's from New Orleans. It was in an old coffee house, the Sazerac Coffee House, actually. Okay. And uh, our buddy Tom, who was he and his wife were kind enough to share some really good stuff with us last time, uh, the Lot B and the Weller Antique 107. They might help us out with a cocktail episode coming soon. But one of his ways, if he's never been to a bar before, to kind of like judge the bartender is have him make a Sazerac. Huh. He's like, it's a classic drink. You should know how to make it. If you can make it well, you're probably a damn good bartender. Yeah. If you can't, mm. put it on the rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so let's try that one. More nose. There's definitely more on the nose. What do they say about it, if anything? So they actually do give uh, tasting notes, aromas of clove, vanilla, anise, and pepper, subtle notes of candy, spices, and citrus, Big finish, smooth with mm. hints of licorice. I don't get the licorice. I never have. Thank God. I've tried and I can't get the licorice out of it, so I, I don't know. I don't like licorice, so that's good. Those are incredibly different. Mm -hmm. And what's the ABV on the, the Sazerac? I think it's 45. 45, yeah. It still has a, huh. a good... They actually put a trademark on America's first cocktail. There you go, from the 1800s. I like that a lot. I had never had it, and That's I finally cool. broke down and ordered some, and then a gracious person I know who doesn't like rye said, if you'd like a bottle, here it is. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll take it. Duh. Yep. <laughs> uh, I really like that a lot. It's easy to drink. It's not overpowering. It's got a good long finish on it. It's sweeter than the Rittenhouse. Mm-hmm but not overly sweet. It doesn't punch you with rye. It's got good solid flavor all the way through. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's it spikes and valleys like no. some. There's no potholes in this one. <laughs> uh, it is great with ice. It's great neat. Mm -hmm. And it's 29 to 32 bottle, to $32 a bottle depending on how you get it. Yeah. Well, when Matt and I were talking about what to do here, I was like, well, how about we do the Rittenhouse and the Sazerac head-to-head, -head, because they're both under 30. And I was like, I paid 32, you dumbass. <laughs> like, Fine, Matt, whatever. <laughs> Matt, going back to the Rittenhouse, something jumps out on the nose at me. Yeah? I can't. It's almost like an orange flavor. Yeah, I can't I identify stick my exactly nose what deep it is. in there to get something. Yeah, but for gone before, like thing. there was almost nothing. <laughs> but it's like there's something now. Yeah, I definitely get something. Huh? What that something is, I don't know. It's 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 there. That's why I'm not a sommelier. Well, one reason I'm not a sommelier. <laughs> See, that that's the only reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you couldn't pick out Rittenhouse's nose. That you don't get it. Yep. Your pen is worthless. Yep. <laughs> Oh, this is a medium amber, minus one. It's not mahogany. I can tell you no, that. God, no. <laughs> what are your, um, so if you had $32 to go spend on a bottle, mm -hmm. what are you going to buy? I'd buy the Sazerac. It, it is richer, smoother, um, more, it's smoother and more interesting at the same time, which you don't often get. Like yeah, I think it's more balanced. Yeah, oftentimes the smoothness might rip some of the character away. Yeah, but yeah, 
I, I absolutely prefer the Sazerac out of these two. That's not a knock on the Rittenhouse. I think it's still a solid buy, like Matt said, for $25 yeah. because it's a good enough price where you're not upset if you want to pour it in a cocktail. Right. But it's good enough to enjoy neat or on the rocks or however you like to drink your rye. So yeah. I think between the two, um, I mean, I definitely prefer the Sazerac. I, I'm betting you feel the same way. Yeah, I do. Um, I don't make a lot of cocktails, so I don't really have things on my shelf that I don't want to just throw a cube in and have a glass. Mm -hmm. So to have something there like, oh, this would be really good if I mixed it. That doesn't make sense for me. I'd rather have it because I just enjoy it all the way around. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like Sazerac better, but I also, I don't not like the Rittenhouse. I'm curious what the mash bills are on these because, and of course they don't tell you, but no. I, I would venture a guess that the Rittenhouse rye has more rye in it than the Sazerac. So yeah, they don't even say, they just say that it's the same as the Big Daddy Sazerac and then the, um, the Thomas Tandy Sazerac. So okay. there's obviously differences between those because... Mm -hmm. They're different, and one is thirty-two dollars, and the others are not even close. <laughs> not, huh? So, per the good folks at BreakingBourbon.com, um, Rittenhouse is a low rye mash bill, fifty-one hmm. percent, which still, to me, doesn't make. I mean, it, it makes sense that's the way they make it but it's a rye mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and again the folks at breakingbourbon.com uh, try to see if they in comparison the this new riff is 95% rye 95? yeah uh, so let's see Buffalo Trace does not disclose mash bills which we know the mash bill ma mash bill? Mash bill used to make this one is their low rye, which is believed to be 51 rye, 39 corn, 10% barley. Hmm. Whatever they're doing, they're doing it right. Yeah. And going back to the Rittenhouse, it just says 51% rye, but it doesn't say corn versus the barley. other breakdown. Because I get a little more of that corn sweetness from the Sazerac that I didn't out of the Rittenhouse. Like Balcones, you kind of get that corn <laughs> Not to that extent. Not, no, yeah. not to that extent, but you can definitely, there's the notes of, of the corn in there. Yep. Both good. That's why you try multiple things. You don't know what you yeah. like, you gotta try it. Yep. All right. And we're enjoying these head-to-head -head videos so we can find out what we like better. Let us know if you do. We like to watch head-to-head -head videos of other bourbon whiskey reviewers who do yep. this, but if you like our head-to-head -head videos, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you want us to see you know, reviewed head to head. If yeah. we can, if we can get our hands on it. We'll do our damnedest to review them for you. We may, we may have one of the two. Yeah, between the two of us, yeah. we can get the other. Or, one. or even a category, whether it's like budget bourbons or single barrels yep. or whatever, whatever it is. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, we're a channel for the people. Ooh, all of them, all the people, all, all the people, all the people. Okay, Matt, we need to give out some scores. Otherwise, we're not doing our damn job, and our kids don't get fed. Oh, my kid's growing like a weed, too, so I better get these scores very well. Your kid's uh, growing weed? Well, no, then I wouldn't need to do this. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I would go 84 on the Sazerac and 81, 82 on the Rittenhouse. Mm -hmm. Bastard. Ha! I got to go first. Got him! Yep, 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 yep. I'd go... One point higher on the Sazerac, I'd go 84 and 85. Yeah. On the Rittenhouse, I'm going to give that another 80. I think it's another solid, it's good, but it's not as solid as the Buffalo Trace, obviously. So right. coming down a few points from that, it's one that I would happily keep that around as my $25 rye if I just want a little glass of something. Yeah. Or if you're making cocktails, I, I bet it would make a darn good cocktail. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Sazerac's better. Sazerac is better. It's got a cool bottle, too. I really like the bottle. Yeah. And I'm not going to buy something strictly for the bottle. But again, if you're like between two. It's a perk. And one looks better than the 
other, take the one that looks better. Yeah. And or, if it, and if you don't like it, go back and get the other one. Yeah. Nobody's saying you can't have both. If you can get both of these with tax, sixty bucks. There you go. All right. Yeah. So you have your assignment uh, of one. Your second assignment is to subscribe here, tell these cicadas to kick rocks, and then follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Both of those were at Booze Breeze. So you can do that. Hey, pour yourself something nice. Pour something for your friend. Yeah. And if you don't have any friends, then pour something for us. And uh, come back and see us next time. Cheers, y'all. Cheers.